Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Market School video series. Farms.com Risk Management has teamed up with the Calb to educate producers and farmers about grain commodity marketing across Canada. This is going to be one out of 26 videos. Uh, who are we? What do we do? Farms.com Risk Management is an, a, a division of Farms.com. You can go to www.farms.com. It's an agriculture, commodity marketing, and price risk management service provider to North American producers and agribusiness. We provide the analysis and information uh, so that farmers uh, have better informed uh, information to make better marketing decisions. And we try to achieve the top quartile in grain prices in any given year. Our team has over 50 years of experience in marketing, production, and risk management. We have our own skin in the game with our own corporate 2100 acre farm as well. So the purpose of this uh, video series basically is to, uh, 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 our focus and attention will be on commodity grain marketing and risk management. Marketing, I like to say, is more of an art than a science. And we hope that at the end of this educational video series that you will be armed with the information and tools to allow you to become that marketing expert. Uh, Remember, Babe Ruth uh, never batted a thousand, but he was one of the best players that ever played the, uh, the game of baseball. And I hope that uh, we can teach you how to do a, a better job of your marketing. Not every grain or crop that is grown in the world will have a futures contract that trades on some exchange. Uh, grain prices are determined by buyers and sellers either on an exchange or through a forward contract. Um, a futures exchange provides buyers and sellers to trade futures contract on a commodity, for example, like the CME, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The past has had a lot of um, uh, trading floors with pits through which traders bought and sold futures contracts to an open outcry system. So you can see from this picture here, they've got a lot of hands going up in the air. So that's your open outcry system. Uh, since the late 1900s, 75% um, of this trading is now electronically done. Exchanges like the CME that uh, we were referring to earlier uh, not only provide the infrastructure for trading, but they also disseminate price information around the globe. They create and list new contracts. They set new rules and govern trading. Uh, they also set position limits as well as price limits, how far up and down a futures contract can uh, move in any given day, marginal requirements, the amount of good faith deposit that is needed to honor that futures contract, and they also publish trading statistics like volume, open interest, also known as the commitment to traders report that is published weekly. It's a zero-sum game. For every loser, there's a winner. There's debits and credits, and at the end of the day, the winner gets the credit, the loser gets the debit. The futures closing quote or price at the end of each day represents the sentiment, the bias, whether it's bullish or bearish, psychological response from many factors uh, that can move that price up or down. The speculator can go long or he buys or he, he can sell or go short. And the hedgers normally who are short or sell because they're um, uh, hedging a uh, position that is long, which is known as a commodity, based on the supply demand factors for that commodity. General rule of thumb, when prices are higher, that means there's a shortage of, su of supply. When prices are lower, that means that perhaps supply is plentiful and demand is low. However, there are many more other factors that can influence uh, price over time, and we're going to discuss each one of those factors upcoming in the next video series. And uh, fear and greed can also play a major role that can drive futures prices prices to extreme levels. Um, each commodity will have a futures contract out to the future. So you, they're called deferred months. The front months are known as the front months. So for example, right now on, on corn, uh, in this example here from farms.com, the March contract here uh, is the front month contract. If you move to the um, July contract here, um, it's called a deferred contract. Um, and there's contracts for March, May, July, September, December, so you can see the, the various contract months, but there isn't one for January. Uh, that's simply because the CME doesn't see enough demand, uh, and so there's no January contract. So if a producer were to sell some corn bushels today in the month of January, it would be off the nearest uh, futures contract, which would be March, and then a basis would be added or subtracted from that futures price to get uh, to arrive at an 
than that price. Basis will be covered in a different video series, but simply put, basis is determined by your local supply demand situations. In some parts of um, Canada, the Canadian dollar can also play a big role, but typically when supply is low, your basis is um, narrow or a positive basis. Uh, when there's um, a lot of supply, that basis can wind or it can get worse. Now in um, uh, our corn example, you can see from the deferred puts that we were referring to um, that there's no carry in the market. In fact, the deferred months are actually lower in price than the front month contract like March. This is known as an inverted market where the market's very concerned about not having enough bushels to meet demand uh, today, and so they're, they're pushing those prices higher in order to ration some demand. Markets are signaling the producer to sell today, not to store in some future. However, if the market was suggesting and maybe the producer wants to maybe store that corn, um, there would be some cost to uh, associated with storing that corn from financing, storage, shrink, insurance to hold on to that grain. Let's say the producer wanted to hold on until July. Um, well, let's look at a wheat example because there was no carry in that corn example. So in this wheat example, you can see from the futures months that there's a full carry. In fact, it's actually better than full carry. Uh, so let's assume that it would cost the producer, say, five cents a bushel for that financing, that storage, that insurance, that trick. If you look at those Chicago wheat futures contracts, you can see that July, the March contract is trading at 796 uh, as of today. Uh, this is January 19th. Um, and you would have to add, if, if we take that five cents times six months, that would equate to 30 cents. If I add that 30 cents to 796, we would come up with an 826 for July. And in fact, July is at 847, so there's more than a full carry. The market's actually telling the producer to store. Take it, uh, and in situations like this, producer wants to take full advantage of that carry, and he would forward book perhaps that wheat futures price to the local elevator and then subtract that uh, basis or add a basis. It doesn't always pay to store. Sometimes when markets have a lot of supply, prices get very depressed and it doesn't pay to store. Uh, producers will take their chances um, hoping that maybe that will reverse. In times when supply is in short supply, you will get that full carry market. Once the producer knows what that futures price is and is ready to sell his or her grain, he can call up a local elevator like the, the, the picture that's that's in the video there, um, or in many cases, it can be an ethanol plant if, if you're selling corn bushels. Um, you can sell off the combine, you can forward book based on that futures price, and again, a basis will be applied depending on that local supply demand situation to arrive at your net price. A date, time of delivery, price, and basis will be determined at that time, and this is Ba a basic understanding of how grain prices are determined. Those grain prices that we looked at earlier trade from uh, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time to about 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And then they also trade overnight from 7 p.m. Eastern to 7 a.m. the following day. In our next video series, we'll uh, dive deeper and look at the natures and components of price risk. We'll actually look at all those different factors that cause the price to go up and down in any given year, and we'll, uh, we'll give you precisely what to look for. I hope that you've learned something today about uh, grain commodity marketing, and until next time, thanks for watching.